Clarendon College, their starting lineup sees one change. Daniel Clark comes in at left back four, Rogel Francis. Burrell between the sticks, Thompson Hodges, Green complete the back four. QP Gadimore and Douglas in the middle of the park. Ashley on the left, Hull on the right with 12 goals to his name. And of course, Mr. Final himself, Kahim Dixon, 31 goals to his name, as well as 16 assists. Yeah, the big question is is whether or not they can live up to what they showed us on Saturday night. It's a big ask to better what you they did, but if there's any team that can do it, it's Clarendon College. As far as Moon High is concerned, they are unchanged from that Manning Cup final. Akeem Bernard in goal, Peralta, Johnson, Gordon, Parchment in the back four, in the middle of the park, Alex Suazo, Carlton Brown and Denzel McKenzie. Of course, with 11 goals and 20 assists to his name, Shane Gordon, Demarion Harris, and Romarion Thomas, the top three. Yeah, well, we expect that they will be playing. A Use the word undisputed. The thrill of victory again and again for Clarendon College this season. The kings of the land. One done. Of that, it's true. The interscholastic Olivia Shield winners once again. They are the best in the country. Clarendon College. And if you were to look at the score lines in the Dakota Cup final and in this playoff, you would also add by far. By a country mile, since they're from the country, let me add that to it. Yeah, every reason to celebrate. Very easy on the eye. Lovely to watch in full flow. They hit a, a bump along the way in the Champions Cup, but they were back to their normal way, default action. And yes, Linwood, teacher Hyde has presided over yet another scintillating Clarendon College school board football team. Yep, embraced. Hull, gracious in defeat. Craig Butler and I think he'll be quick to admit that he was beaten by a better team and the best team in the land. Clarendon College winning this one by four goals to nil. It's been a playoff to remember, especially for the Clarendon College supporters. Mona actually pressed early and should have taken this chance. Denzel McKenzie with the effort. Yeah, something big for them. If they had gotten that goal, they could have played a little bit more their, their, their strategy. Yeah, but it was always going to be difficult once they got behind. And they had chances. Kahim Dixon trying to pull out the spectacular here. And Akeem Bernard, he showed signs from early in the game that he just wasn't up to it tonight. Yeah, challenges, challenging his own defender there when the clearance was going to be easy. And then this at the back post. You don't leave the best striker at the schoolboy football level on mark there no you don't do that and he will not let you off the hook with doing that with all the height that mona has in the back line it was dixon heading home undisturbed until the ball was in the back of the net that is embrace from the teacher they got the breakthrough they could have had more ashley did well trying to send that one across and then the follow-up wide just wide Gallimore was getting sharper and sharper. And then in the second half, Clarendon College went up another gear. Gallimore improved his game, tried to get his teammates involved, including Dixon, who almost scored. That probably would have been the goal of the season. Look at the bit of skill there. Yeah, and where there was no space, there was. And the man there was Dixon. Then the ball inside, and a wonderful header from Thomas. Fabulous save by Burrell. When you have a goalkeeper, who doesn't do a lot in games because the way his team monopolized possession. Big save. And then Hull with a floated ball inside. Mona trying to clear. Dixon in the thick of things. Douglas trying to get there. They were passing it around and it was finally put in by Gallimore. Right into the corner. Yeah, that was composure of the highest level. Not flustered there. Easy passing back and forth. And then the snapshot. And it was enough. 
to beat Bernard, but that's the composure this team shows. And then Thomas with an effort from outside the box. Burrell equal to the task. He had a good game. Yeah, really good game when called upon. And then Bernard should have done much better there. Hull pouncing on it inside the box. Yeah, you, you fought the goalkeeper on that one. Uh, both Hull's goal, you feel the goalkeeper should have done better. You say try and catch it at your highest point. Yeah. It was nowhere close. It was. You have the advantage of your hands and he allowed Hull to get in there. And then Hull would get a second deflected effort inside. He tried the first time. That was at the second time of asking. And it was too much power for Bernard, who, again, I think should have done better. Much, much better. And you'll say you fought the goalkeeper on it in terms of the save being made. In terms of the execution, though, you give Hull top marks for it. Kept his eyes on it, waited until it dropped so he could get his knee over it. Flush on the instep. And yeah, disappointed Bernard. Hull saying, yeah, I'm the Messiah. I'll stretch arm. 4-0, the final score. Yep, CC domination, 15 shots, 5 on target, Mona High with 13 shots, 4 of which were on target, Clarendon College, the more physical outlet it seemed, with 16 fouls, doubling the amount by Mona High, just the one yellow card shown to Atibo Green, and uh, Mona High had more corner kicks, 11-9, uh, Clarendon College with the majority of the possession though, at 57%. Now time for the Digital Man of the Ma Match Award. And it goes in favor of Christopher Hull. Thank you, Donald. I'm joined by Junior Brand Manager of Digital, Kadeen Webley. She presents the Man of the Match Award to Christopher Hull. All right, Chris, let's have a quick chat. Speak to me about those two goals, especially the bicycle kick. Well, it was a wonderful feeling today to score two goals into the Oliver Shield final. I've been training hard, saying I'm coming into this game to score. And in terms of you switching to the striker position and Kahim going to the left, you mentioned that's something you practice in training. Yes, it's something we've been practicing training, doing it regular in training and also in games. Back to back Olivia Shield titles. Speak to me about the work that goes into training sessions and just. Well, executing. the work that goes into training sessions, we have a wonderful trainer, Coach Sammy, Junior Summers, which is not here with us today. He's been training hard with us all pre season from July. Yeah, so it's I, good. Congratulations, Chris. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that was Christopher Hull there. Two-time back-to-back Olivia Shield champion now for Clarendon College. I'm being joined now by Mona High coach Craig Butler. And his staff, of course. He never leaves them out. <laughs> no, Win together, we lose together, no? Yeah, you said it, coach. I asked you about your game plan before the game. And it was evident what it was to go direct and exploit the spaces that Clarendon College left when they went forward. You seemed to run out of gas at the end, but speak to me about the performance. No, it was not about running out of gas. It was about not taking the chances. We, got, we, we, we won the ball, we made our chances, we got our chances, we didn't score. And when you don't score like that and you're pressing like that, sooner or later, you're going to break down. And um, for me, I think the boys played well, yeah, but I think Clarendon College today, was the better team on the field. I'm about to give them their props and show them their respect. Will this serve as a platform for you to build on next season and we could see you back on this stage? Absolutely. We only have two players leaving next season. So, we, we, you know, I'm going to have a lot coming in. So we're all right. We're all right. You know, the program is strong and the movement is strong. And if it's one thing they cannot say is that Mona is a non-traditional school. Congrats, coach. Yeah, we're ready to go. All right? Come cool. on, all the best. They will never die. Thank you. Yeah, that's the Mona Pride there, led by Coach Butler. First time Olivia Shield appearance for them. And they just came up short against this man's team, Coach Lenny TJ. Coach, back-to-back -back Olivia Shields. Speak to me about that feat. Very happy about it. I think we worked pretty, pretty hard this season for this. The boys wanted it most. And I told you before, about seven of them is leaving this year, so they were hell-bent on defending the Olivia Sheen. And you see what they did tonight. 
We didn't start out well in the first half, but as the game went on, we gradually picked up and started past the ball and the movement. They enjoyed it tonight. That's what I told them. Just go out there and enjoy the game. Yeah, Christopher Hall was the man of the match for this game. Speak to me about you moving him from the left wing position to the striker. Yeah, they, they do that, you know, on, on many occasions. They rotate a lot up front. So sometimes um, Ashley comes in and, and so we, we, we mix it up, you know. We don't want them to stay wide in the attacking third. They need to get into the box. And that's what he did tonight, you know. All right, congrats, coach. When's the party? Tomorrow. We're going down Clarendon tomorrow. All right, all the best. All right, all right. Claim to that. Olivia but Shields, right now, first they have to see Clarendon College. Or nine and one then by Jamaica College. The Olivia Shields, presented by Keith Wellington, Andre Roper. So, the moment KFC, at hand. Makes the it has finally Clarendon arrived College. for Clarendon College, champions, champions of the land. They have won the Olivia Shield in this year, 2023, a schoolboy football team that we will remember for a very, very long time. I've been talking about this team for a long, long time, Donald. But they excite me. Uh, I watched them on Saturday and I couldn't sit in doing commentary. Uh, they had me on my feet and a lot of the fans in the stands were on their feet. It's a really good schoolboy football team, the Scranton College. And a lot of persons will hear Coach Hyde said seven players leaving and thinking, OK, we can have a go at them again. But we know their conveyor line will always be turning and players will be coming off. But right now, it's about this set of players who've really wowed us all season long. And they topped it off tonight. Not the most scintillating performance that we've seen from them, but it was always going to be hard to replicate what they did on Saturday. Took a lot out of them, but what they had left in the tank is still better than many teams, if not all teams, in schoolboy football. Really a season to remember. And uh, a brilliant schoolboy football season. We have seen some fantastic goals, team goals especially. What are your thoughts on what happened this year? No, it was a great watch. I, I had the, the advantage, well, I had the advantage of being engulfed in it as a coach as well. And it, it's always fantastic, you know, coming up against different rivals, having the hopes of going on and winning it all. Um, and then to, to have uh, the, the vantage point of sitting here with um, great persons like yourself to, to make the calls and, and see it from a different angle. And from all angles, being engulfed in it and sitting here or even in the stands sometimes as a spectator i've enjoyed this season and no